Windows 7 end of support 2020 is a concern for many. And in this very interesting email from a viewer, he's asking the following, should he switch to Windows 10? What about privacy on Windows 10 and a VPN solution? Should he move to Linux? But isn't Linux still in development? And what about gaming on Linux? Let's take it out. Hey Nimtags and welcome, this is Ash from Himitech and on this channel I want to help you develop a better relationship with technology. So if you're new here, consider subscribing and click the bell icon to go from newbie to techie. And please use my Amazon affiliate links in the description below to help out the channel. So the email is from re underscore way 47. I saw your video of Windows 10 and Linux Mint and I have some questions and I hope you could help me out. I have Windows 7 at the moment and like you said, they are going to shut down the Windows 7 server down in two months. So I'm forced to change my operating system. I know that Windows 10 has an awful privacy policy and I read here and there things about how to make Windows 10 privacy slightly acceptable, but I'm still hesitant when it comes to switching to Windows 10. I know about Linux, but I don't have much knowledge about this operating system. I know it's open source and much safer when it comes to privacy compared to Windows 10, but Linux is still in development, so it's not a real option at the moment. What can you advise me? Should I take the steps to install Windows 10 or 10 Pro, or is there another and better option out there? By the way, I already have a VPN and I read that it's a great bonus to have when installing Windows 10 but I still don't fully trust Windows to secure my privacy fully. I also know that Linux version, Linux Mint, is the closest thing a Windows user can adapt to, but like I mentioned, they're still in development, and as a frequent gamer who also watches a lot of videos slash movies, Linux Mint is not ideal. I know you have more experience in regards to Linux, and I know you switched from Windows 10 to Linux, and you encourage others to do the same, which I support. I'm just looking for an OS that has the privacy policy of Linux and the capability of Windows in regards to gaming, etc. So that I don't waste your time, I've already tackled some of these issues in the last two videos. So check the timestamps in the description below and I will include relevant clips from these videos. But I'm putting them towards the end in this video so you can guilt-free click off when you get to those points. If you've already watched these videos, you're welcome. Number one, Windows 10 privacy policy. Like one of my viewers commented in my previous video, main or my name, Milares, sorry if I plundered your uh, name. To those Windows 10 fanboys out there, I challenge you to read the entire EULA. Then tell me if you genuinely agree with it word for word. Anyone who reads it can never accept it. The reason I'm on Linux since 2010. The local Windows 10 license terms on your computer gives you a hint about the data they collect about you. But if you go to the full document, which can be found on their website, it's a 60 page read. And I did browse through it. It is scary. And that's one of the reasons I'm switching to Linux and definitely the reason why I'm getting my kids to start using Linux. So no, if you really have data privacy concerns, stop using Microsoft altogether. And Apple products and unfortunately Google services for that matter. That's a discussion for another time. Number two, using a VPN. A VPN is a virtual private network which connects your device to a server somewhere on the internet and you use that server's IP address to browse the internet. Therefore, if that server is located in a different country, then it will appear that you are browsing from that country. Nowadays, most people would want to use a VPN to do things like bypassing geographical restrictions on certain websites for streaming content, like for Netflix and Hulu, or to download copyrighted material through torrents. Yes, you can get some level of anonymity online by hiding your true location or even protecting yourself on public Wi-Fi hotspots and the data is usually encrypted. Your level of privacy and untraceability depends on many factors, like the type of VPN technology of your provider, which VPN protocols are being used, and even legal and policy limitations of any given country. In simple words, a VPN will not offer you full anonymity online, but it can protect you to varying levels because without a VPN, your connection is fully open and a lot more vulnerable to potential hacks. Additionally, if the law enforcement of your country forces the VPN company to share your data, then your records are accessible. 
Ergo, a VPN doesn't make you completely invisible. Mythbuster. So on that note, if you really have concerns about your footprint on the web, I would definitely avoid Microsoft and Apple platforms. Ergo, no Windows and no Mac OS. Same goes for your smartphone, by the way. I can't tell you which VPN to get, and there is also a DIY VPN you could create, but it's a lot of hassle and has limitations. Of course, you can always use a VPN even if you are on Linux. It's even better. Number three. Is Linux still in development? This is a huge misunderstanding or misinformation. Linux is not in development, Linux is fully developed. Linux as an operating system is in fact used more than you know in devices you use daily, like the majority of web servers which run on Linux and Android smartphones which are based partly on the Linux kernel and the more recent Google Stadia which uses Linux and is based on Vulkan and Chrome OS, which is a version of Linux, and so on and so forth. The reason most people do not know about Linux is because in the consumer market, Microsoft and Apple have the bigger share of consumer products. And unlike the two giants, Linux is not advertised. Linux is developed and maintained through an open source community. But you probably mean Linux is still in development as far as PC gaming is concerned. And the answer to that would be, Yes, you are right. The irony is that SteamOS is also based on Linux. Even the mighty Windows have included a proper Linux kernel in their Windows 10 Insider preview build, and some people are speculating that the next version of Windows, Windows 11, could be released with Bash on Windows, its other nickname. Don't quote me on that, I haven't followed that story lately, so someone can update us in the comments below. As for Linux Mint being the closest thing to Windows, that's partially true, but there are a few others and it will depend on your individual taste and needs like Ubuntu, Zorin OS, Elementary, Chalet OS. So Google a best Windows for Linux whenever you're ready. But yeah, you can't go wrong with Linux Mint. Number four. What about gaming on Linux? Gaming on Linux is better than it has ever been, and the recent addition of Proton from Valve on Steam has been met with joy from gamers around the world, especially in the Linux community. However, not every game is playable through Proton on Steam yet, and Windows is still king when it comes to PC gaming. Which brings me to your wishful thinking. I'm just looking for an OS that has the privacy policy of Linux and the capability of Windows in regards to gaming, etc. And that brings me to number five, which is you want the best of both worlds. I need to be a little harsh here, not to you, but to myself first and foremost, as like yourself, I sometimes have unrealistic expectation and I want the best of both worlds. Reality is that the advent of the internet and increased consumerism has given rise to impatience and self-entitlement. We want things now, we want things to work out of the box, and we want answers at the click of a button. And with Linux, you will not get these very easily, but you will eventually be able to customize it to your needs, which you can't do with Windows. So you will need to decide which is more important, your privacy or your gaming. You cannot have them both, at least not at the moment, to the level you want. And you cannot have complete anonymity online. If you want that, then you need to completely unplug from the matrix. If I may, this is my situation. I got into tech because of PC gaming, and although I have gaming hardware and a library of over 80 games in Steam, I have clocked only one game in the last five years when I became ill for one month and couldn't do anything else. So I would have no issue switching to Linux fully, even if I were to continue gaming. And to be perfectly clear, I am not a Linux power user, nor an experienced one, although I prefer Linux over Windows any day. And this is the very reason I'm making these videos on this channel, to encourage all of you to at least try one of the distros and to join us here on this journey while we switch together. And that brings me to number six, which was the first point of your email, Windows 7 end of support 2020, which I've already covered, so here's a clip, but if you watched it, you can click off, but do not forget to subscribe if you're new here. End of support doesn't mean end. Windows 7 will still continue to work, but with reduced features, but that's for the general public. In the enterprise sector, it will be up to individual organizations to continue with Windows 7 or not. And that would depend on the deal they have directly with Microsoft. 
any deployment of Windows 10 upgrade would have already been decided by management at this stage. As for embedded devices like ATMs or gas pumps, which are running with Windows 7, their life cycle are usually different to versions of Windows on personal computers. Here is what's not going to work anymore for the general end user. No more security updates and your Windows 7 PC will not be protected by Microsoft Security Essentials, so yeah, your computer might become vulnerable. Windows 7 updates have been a problem in my experience way back since 2015 and 16, coincidentally when Windows 10 was being offered as a free upgrade. I remember spending quite a few weekends trying to fix Windows 7 updates for clients' computers, but in the end, I gave into Windows 10. It just wasn't worth the time. However, security on a Windows PC isn't just about updates and antivirus software, but rather a common sense and good administration. So if you were using your PC irresponsibly in the first place, you probably won't see a difference much. Microsoft customer service will no longer be available to provide Windows 7 technical support. If you're anything like me, I've never actually benefited from their support, so I don't see how that would change now. Related services for Windows 7 will also be discontinued over time. For example, certain games such as Internet Backgammon and Internet Checkers, as well as Electronic, program guide for Windows Media Center are all scheduled to be discontinued in January 2020. Support for Internet Explorer on a Windows 7 device will also be discontinued. The only reason I ever used Internet Explorer on a Windows 7 machine was to go download Google Chrome or Mozilla Firefox, and sometimes I didn't even do that if I had the installation app on a pen drive. There will be no driver updates or support or even existence of drivers for some newer devices that you may want to connect to your PC. And again, this isn't anything new since Windows 10's infiltration. Manufacturers have not really been uh, maintaining drivers for Windows 7 as much. So what will continue to work? You can still install and activate Windows 7 after 14 January 2020 in theory. You can still install all other applications like Google Chrome, VLC Media Player and others, but don't expect a flawless experience as time goes by. Microsoft Office will still work depending on the version you are using. As for gaming, Microsoft brought DirectX 12 support to Windows 7 in August 2019, six months before its end of support against first common logic. So I'm guessing game coders will still be supporting Windows 7 for a while if it's anything like Windows XP, as it may take a while before users of Windows 7 completely dissipate. Talking about Windows XP, here's history repeating itself, well, sort of. This is close to my heart as it was thanks to mainstream axing of Windows XP, which brought me into the tech world, and more precisely, introducing me to Linux. So the big question, what do you do? Stick with Windows 7, upgrade to Windows 10, or try another OS like Linux or Mac OS? My answer might surprise you. As for Windows 10 or 10 Pro, if you are getting a free upgrade, Pro it is, as it comes with more perks than a home version only. I've put together a Linux for Beginners playlist and the first three videos are aimed at complete beginners from creating an installation drive to installing Linux to first thing to do on Linux Mint. So go watch those videos down here and this other video up here on the channel. Please use my Amazon affiliate links to help out the channel. Subscribe if you're new here and click the bell icon to go from newbie to techie. This was Ash from Hill My Tech and I will see you in the next one. Peace out. Oh, <laughs>